Uh, how'd it go yesterday? Um, it was uh, a very unusual election day. Um, COVID-19 um, uh, created issues for all of our poll workers and our voters. Uh, went pretty well uh, overall. You know, we had some um, situations um, that uh, created long lines. We had some situations that, um, uh, you know, caused some voters some uh, uh, inconveniences. But overall, it was a good day. We had an extraordinary turnout of 19.5%. Um, and in a primary uh, in Greenville County, that was an extraordinary turnout. So, um, you know, that coupled with um, the change in how we do things uh, made for a trying day. But I think the voters were um, uh, pleased with uh, what they saw. Some of them weren't uh, because, you know, we're dealing with a lot of poll workers and some of them following um, the, the guidelines that we provided and some of them didn't. And where they didn't, of course, they all got reported to our office. Um, so we're dealing with those as, as an issue. Uh, we have um, two potential runoffs and one probable mandatory recount, but those will not be ordered until we finish our election process of certification tomorrow at noon here and at the state level in Columbia, where one of those runoffs for the House district will be ordered by the State Election Commission. So a uh, num number of moving parts still. So while we thought that the uh, primary was over, it's not really. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're in the process of, uh, uh, you know, trying to get things ready for certification. We have um, a little over 130 ballots to, um, to be dealt with tomorrow. These were provisional ballots and uh, fail-safe ballots. Uh, they very well could impact. The, the one race that is right now one vote difference. And uh, of course, that's unofficial numbers until we certify on Thursday. And then that certification will determine the mandatory recount. And uh, then the mandatory recount will probably determine a winner and a loser unless it comes out to be a dead heat tie, in which case, if it's a dead heat tie in that race, then a runoff would be held two weeks along with the other runoffs. So what is the date of runoff? Runoff is, I'm sorry. I'm just saying, I'm just saying not doing good for you. No, you're good. Um, the, uh, the runoff is scheduled two weeks from yesterday, which is the 23rd of June, if my day account, the count of days is right. Uh, but two weeks from yesterday. That's uh, state law. And um, so we'll m move judiciously in that direction. Any insights for November that we're going to take, sir? Well, you know, we'll probably place a little bit more emphasis on making sure that all of our poll workers follow those um, those proper guidelines and that they understand how important they are. And, um, you know, we will probably tweak these systems between now and November. Um, you know, in some cases, uh, you know, we're talking about m more education for our poll workers. And, um, you know, we hope more poll workers um, because we were running on uh, fumes yesterday as far as the number of poll workers we had. And we'll need three times that many poll workers going into November to properly put on an election. Obviously, I think it's unlikely that COVID-19 will be completely resolved come November. So likely some of those experienced poll workers that we were missing yesterday will not come back. What do you have planned for, um, you know, more extensive training for maybe these younger, less experienced poll workers to make sure we don't run into the same problems we saw yesterday? Now you're asking me to look into a crystal ball. Um, by the way, any of you want to take a day off and work the polls for us would be greatly appreciated. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, recruitment's going to be tough. Um, you know, we hope that the interest in the general election will be such that people will step up and, and help us out. I think people saw what we, will, what we did yesterday, and they will hopefully help us out moving into November. And, um, you know, knowing that we put certain things in place to uh, protect not only the, the voters but our workers. And, um, you know, that's the whole idea. 
and and we do we will do things um, pretty much the same way in November that we did yesterday. We may actually put in a few more um, you know changes. We don't know what they may be yet because we've got months to figure it out um, to uh, you know maybe tweak our system. This was the, our our first election uh, under a um, uh, under the kind of situation that we're in with COVID-19. Um, so you know come the fall, um, you know we we probably will tweak these systems and um, uh, I think we will definitely see a lot of what we did yesterday. I think voting with a, um, a, a, uh, a, a stick, a, a cotton tip stick, um, I guess I'll go ahead and use the trade name of Q-tip, but uh, voting with a Q-tip I think will be the order of the day for the next few years. Um, you know, mask I think will be the order of the day for, you know, uh, at least November's election. Um, you know, hand sanitizing I think will be very strong, um, you know, for the next year. Uh, so those things are, uh, and even social distancing will be, um, you know, uh, a strong issue. Now social distancing added to um, the stress level of voters because they felt like, well, oh, this long line. Well, you know, you put the same number of people without social distancing and they fit in about five yards and, you know, we put social distancing in and it becomes 40 yards. You know, so um, those those became issues. We, we were still voting voters um, at uh, 8 o'clock. They were in line at 7 and uh, we, it took us about an hour, a little bit longer to get those voters through the system, but everybody who was in line at 7 got to cast a ballot and for that I'm really tickled that our poll workers were, were diligent and um, they were um, right there to make sure things were done properly. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate it. You got a question from news news director? No, uh, <laughs> the only thing is, you know, were you surprised by the turnout yesterday? Did you expect a different outcome? I, 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 no, outcome I didn't care about. Okay, I don't. We uh, election officials don't care who wins and who loses. I'm sorry. I mean, as far as um, the amount of people, the, the amount of people who voted yesterday was a tremendous surprise. Now, keep in mind that in three fourths, you know, two thirds, three fourths of the county, there was no Democratic primary. So imagine if we'd had a countywide or a statewide Democratic primary, you know, that number would have been what I call through the roof. You know, we would have been well into the twenties. Uh, in a primary. We haven't seen those kind of numbers in uh, a decade or better, and maybe even two decades. Um, back to the old days when we'd have turnout of you know, 30, 35 percent in, in, in primaries. We haven't seen those days in probably 20 years. So those are the kind of things that, um, you know, yeah, we were surprised. Um, you know, here we are, you know, an, an exceptional turnout and and working with poll workers at bare minimum because we had trouble recruiting, um, recruiting and training, and uh, even with that we you know we still had some issues. But um, by and large, those those poll workers out there because they you know when they hit the door at seven you know six o'clock for them to show up and the first voters at seven, um, uh, some of them got overwhelmed. And um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't have enough um, um, experience in those locations to calm the fears and to you know settle our our new workers down. And you know, so it was um, very interesting. And um, we we hope uh, a learning situation, and we sure hope that those workers will come back to us and and not leave us for November. And then we hope that those that are sitting on the sideline that have worked for us in the past will come back to us in November.